Commissioner Gamble and I had a conversation uh, this morning, and she had some good points uh, about some earlier votes that were taken that didn't require me to require some additional time to think about the recommended, recommended appointments. And as I thought back over the two and a half years I've been here, this might be the first appointment where it won't be unanimous. So um, her question was, so why do I need more time on this one? And I said, well, be, as opposed to the previous ones, and it goes back to my point is that at all the other appointments, regardless of the nature of the appointment, the board seemed to be, have unanimity about it, and it wasn't a concern uh, that are being addressed uh, on this one. And I'm going to be the swing vote on this one. So I just need more time to uh, sit down with this gentleman and talk to him, because this is a very important uh, appointment. This development authority is getting more and more attention um, in this current day and age, and I want to make sure that how my vote is an informed vote. Uh, and that's why I'm going to make a motion to uh, continue this, um, this agenda item until the uh, evening meeting of this month. I have a second. So comments, questions? I would like to make the comment that I followed procedure and policy of the board in submitting mm -hmm. this appointment. Mm -hmm. We then followed up with submitting a resume for everyone to review. At the agenda work session yesterday, there were no comments or qu questions until after the executive session was held when I was told you better walk the halls. Mm -hmm. Again, to me, this is coming across as pure patronage and politics at its worst on this board. I'm not sure. Again, you're entitled to your opinion, Commissioner. Honor. On April 9th of 2019, Commissioner Burrell appointed a first time appointee mm -hmm. to this board. Mm -hmm. This board unanimously approved Correct. it. There was no contention, there was no discussion on the third floor. All I'm asking to do is appoint someone who many on the Development Authority view as very controversial, and on this board consider him controversial as well, because he holds a different opinion than those on this board. That is what the voters of District 1 expect. They expect somebody with a conservative view. They expect someone that's going to go out there and represent their interest, not the interest of a political engine. So my appointment, yes, he has a different view. He is an associate professor of economics. <laughs> he understands this. Why are we so afraid to have someone with a different view be appointed to a board? I think, I think every commissioner here is entitled to their opinion on matters that brought forth uh, on agenda items. And like I said, this is the first, this is the first uh, appointment that I'm aware of where there was a unanimity. And since I'm going to be the swing vote on it, I just need more time to make sure that I can uh, have the information to make an informed informed vote. That's all I'm asking for here. So uh, whatever, you know, whatever happened before uh, or happened during this time, it's a different, it, the circumstances of time are clearly different because on this one here, we do not have unanimity on this, on this, uh, on this appointment. But if you go back to code, code only states, is the appointee a taxpayer of the county? He is. Okay. And then Mr. Hagler, if I could get you to answer this question, the only other um, item that the um, code states is if um, the appointee is an officer or employee of the county. Mr. Hagler, is J.C. Bradbury an officer or an employee of the county? Not that I'm aware of, no ma'am. So again, the criteria that is out there for this appointment, my appointee makes. It's not your appointment, it's a board appointment. It's your recommendation, but it's a board appointment. And the process was is informally, and it's a good process, every member of this board was afforded the opportunity to make a recommendation to this board. But this is not, this is not an assigned appointment to the commissioners. So the process has worked in the past, and this time there's a hiccup. There's a, there's a, there's a bump in the road. And since there seems to be, uh, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on this at the, at the time, I just need more time to, to talk uh, to this gentleman to make sure that what my vote is is something that I believe I take the appropriate time to talk to him, and when I vote on it, it's an informed vote. That's all I'm saying here. And again, then I would beg to question, there wasn't a hiccup on your vote when Commissioner Ott in 2018 reappointed Karen Hall Hallisey, mm -hmm. when Commissioner Cupid appointed Jamala McFadden for mm -hmm. their first term, or when you appointed Kevin Nichols. Mm -hmm. So again, here, I am a new member on this board, and you are not treating me as equal 
member of this board as you have others. I, I, I really respectfully disagree because my, my, one of my responsibilities here, and I, I think it's important, is that I get a sense of where the board is on each of the agenda items. And if I sense there's going to be a problem, it makes no sense to bring an agenda item here, which I do not believe is going to get the support of the board. We're wasting our time by doing that. Right now, on this one here, I'm not saying that this is not going to be approved. What I'm saying is, is there, that there's need, there needs to be more time on my part, since I'm the swing vote on this here, to decide what my vote's going to be. So. <laughs> and then again, if we are going to be changing the policy as to how we do appointments and we're going to need an appointee to be interviewed, then our policy needs to be updated and to reflect that. And so every person on this board understands the new policy and guidelines that There's, are being put forward. It hasn't forward. changed. I don't remember interviewing Smith Peck um, before Commissioner Burrell appointed him. The circumstances, the circumstances were different there, Commissioner. Like I said, this is the first appointment. Because that has you not... trusted the Commissioner Burrell's appointment. You're not trusting no, my there, judgment. There are two there are two commissioners here who are not going to support this appointment. All right? There are two who will that I know of, or I, I, I believe there will be. Since I'm the third vote, I'm not sure yet how I'm going to go because I do not know this gentleman. And I think anyone sitting here, if you're having this conversation, it would be common sense that before you make an important appointment of this nature to this very important board, that if there's some concerns that you might have about that, that you have those concerns addressed before you make the vote. That's all we're doing here. Then I hope you do your due diligence in the next two weeks and meet with Mr. I can Bradford. assure you that this, this will come back again in two weeks for the board to be, uh, to be voted on. And will you require the other board members to interview him as well? I'm not going to sit here and tell other board members how to do their job, Commissioner. Here's your Cupid. When I joined the board and um, was preparing to make an appointment to the Development Authority, it was met with controversy. And um, there was clarification about appointments to this board or to this authority through our clerk's office and through legal. Because even though semantically or on paper, the board makes the appointment, there was this understanding of commissioners which was asserted to me by commissioners that each commissioner had the ability to make an appointment to the board. No one's hands are tied to have to approve anyone's appointment, but it was a given that the uh, uh, commissioner should have that ability. And when I came on board, I think in a move um, that someone on board wanted to make, they wanted to make that appointment for me, so there was some clarification to it. So um, with that understanding, I think that there tends to be um, some deference to who the commissioner wants to have on the board. And in this circumstance, um, I, I think it's less a matter of, of process, but more an issue of substance. Um, I don't think there's ever presumed um, unanimity on any vote that we have. But I um, do believe that um, this is less of an issue of process about unanimity and, and more of an issue of the substantive nature of this appointment. And um, I don't, I've, I've not had any more um, background information on any other appointee that anybody in this board has made beyond their resume and faith and trust that this person is confidently being um, suggested by the commissioner. So I, I do believe that this is being treated uniquely. And I also believe you still need three out of five for, for it to move forward. So it doesn't hurt for the chairman to have opportunity to um, weigh in on this matter, but I think that it sends a chilling effect if we're expecting that there's unanimity on something as important as this. 
because if something is as important as the work of the development authority, we're hoping that each person is able to bring objective thought to it based on the confidence of the person who was elected to, to um, represent um, their constituency. And um, I become increasingly concerned by the dialogue about this particular appointment when um, it seems to be limiting some level of objectivity to the doling out of significant dollars for incentives to establish this county. And I just hope that we can just reflect on the, the nature of not only that board, but this board, and knowing that we do not come to every matter um, in unison. There's some people who may disagree at times, but we respect the commissioner for their disagreement because of the amount of time and effort that they spend in developing their perspective and their views their perspectives being their views. And um, I'm thinking that we should expect that same professionalism to be brought to whichever appointment that, um, that the commissioner may make to a board. So um, with that, Commissioner Gambrell, I'm, I'm supportive of us maintaining our regular process of allowing the commissioners to be able to suggest appointments to the board and I'm hoping that um, the message that we're not trying to send is that we're expecting the board to be of unanimous thought or people on an authority to be of unanimous thought to be able to conduct the business of this county. Commissioner, Commissioner Rock. <coughs> I, I just, I'm going to agree with one part of what Commissioner McCube has said, okay, and there is never a time where it is wrong if a commissioner asks for more time. Last meeting, I tabled something that just got approved 5-0 that totally met every single um, part of the county code about incentives. It was, it was giving um, money advantages to a business, but I tabled it because I said I needed more time. And, and I, I take a little bit of exception to, the, to trying to accuse the chairman of having um, other reasons for asking for more time. If, if he determined that he is going to be the third vote and he's asking for more time, then this board needs to give any commissioner the time to do their due diligence to make a decision that they think is right. And, and I just think that it's wrong to make public accusations when a commissioner asks for extra time. And Commissioner Ott, to respond to that, when you asked for your extension on your agenda item, you did so at the work session. The chairman approached me four minutes before the start of this meeting and informed me he had three, two other votes to hold this agenda item. Four minutes before the meeting started, he approached me. You know what, if, if everything could happen at the agenda meeting, then we wouldn't have the meeting the Friday before where the agenda is created. Things don't happen exactly on Mondays. I mean, I wasn't here yesterday. I was fine. Okay. So there are, I mean, you know, it's a little bit difficult to have a conversation with any of you if I'm in the air. So there are going to be times where the conversations may happen after the agenda meeting. Um, and, you know, just to think that everyone's going to have their mind made up on Monday by the end of the meeting at 1030 is just, it, there's, you can't think that way. Um, you know, the chairman came to you and said that he had concerns. He could have waited until the meeting, but he didn't. He talked to you first. And, and so, you know, to try to think that everything is going to be resolved money before doesn't work the way. How many times, I mean, you know, we have a green page in here. I didn't know we were doing this. Okay, I don't have a problem. I think what Commissioner <coughs> Cupid did for a proclamation was a great thing. I mean, you know, getting kids to read is awesome. But this was done after the fact. So to say that something has to happen at the agenda meeting is just, that's, that's not the way things work. Well, and I understand, but that was at our agenda meeting yesterday. But the, the fact of it is, is that when I sent out my appointment card, that appointment card contained all the contact information for my appointee. The chairman could have easily obtained that information or any of the commissioners could have obtained that information 
and contacted him directly and started asking questions. So again, two weeks ago, it was on um, August 29th is when that appointment card went out. I understand the chairman was out of town on vacation, but he has been that's back. That's not the issue. And again, if you needed to reach out and ask him questions, why did you not go out and ask those questions prior to four minutes before the start of this because meeting? Because I didn't know until yesterday that there were two votes in opposition to the appointment. And I, and I offered you the courtesy of saying, I suggested you walk the halls to make sure you have the votes for this. I could have just let you sit out here and hang. We could have voted on this, and I, I could have done the same thing. So, Commissioner, I think we've made our point here, all right? I know you're not happy about this, and, uh, you know, we're just going to have to sit here and, and agree to disagree on this one. Sorry. Well, we can agree to disagree, but when I'm told the opposition to my appointee is because they don't like what has been written in the MDJ, that is not a substantiative of reason to deny the appointee. Uh, I, don't look, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know where you're getting your comments from. All I know is, is that I knew there were two votes in opposition yesterday, and there might, and I didn't know about a third. There might have been a third, and so I asked you to lock the hall to make sure you had the votes. That was that was a matter of professional courtesy to you. And this morning, since I realized there was in fact two votes against it, all right, I read and sit here and tell you at this meeting that I was going to ask to continue. I offered you again the official courtesy. I realized it's the last minute. It was a last minute thing, but it wasn't intentional. It was a matter of how the circumstances rolled out. So I'll continue to do business that way. As soon as I know something, even if it's the last minute, I made a commitment to everybody here, no surprises. And sometimes that commitment to be honored has to happen at the last minute when I finally have the facts at hand to provide you what I know. And that's what happened this time. But I think we should also remember that, you know, we handle anywhere from 50 to 100 agenda items every, every meeting. So. Let's not have one agenda item color the nature of how we do business here. 99% of the things we do here, we discuss fully. When we present them here, is they're approved because we have all the background. This is one that didn't happen that way. It's not a perfect world. And I don't think it's unreasonable to anybody in this in the, that, that knows how to do this business that when any one of us asks us for more time, it's for a good reason, and it's not personal. It's professional. So that's all I'm saying. So, so. I, I don't, you know... We have a retreat coming up in a couple of weeks for us to come together and figure out how to, um, I guess, better work together as a board. But, I mean, just in defense of Kelly, I've seen agenda items come before here where we've asked for time and they've still moved quickly through. Even when we knew beforehand there was significant disagreement on a very significant matter that I think made us look really bad as a board. So it's like, we're, I just hope that if that is going to be our approach for this matter, that that's our approach for matters moving forward. Because in an ideal world, we'll all have time to vet things well and be competent in our vote. Okay. All right, with that, I call a question. All right, so it passes five to zero to hold. Thank you, commissioners.